thank you all for uh, coming. It's a great honor and privilege to be able to uh, recognize and honor a man whose uh, contributions um, have really uh, defined a field and have, have really had a significant impact on uh, the university, uh, the department, you know, and the world as a whole. Um, um, we're going to begin by uh, having a few introductions um, uh, by uh, some of our uh, uh, important uh, um, administrators here. Um, so I'd like to begin uh, by welcoming um, Interim Dean uh, Tamir Basar um, to give a few welcoming words. Uh, Professor Basar uh, is uh, widely uh, acclaimed in his, in his own rank uh, with, uh, uh, with accomplishments that include the National Academy of Engineering, major awards from the IEEE, over 800 publications, you know, and, and is again a, rec a recognized leader in his field. So it's my privilege to uh, introduce Interim Dean Basar. Thank you. Thank you, John, and uh, good morning, and, and welcome to all of you. It's, uh, this is a historic moment, really, in the, in the history of uh, this campus and, and the University of Illinois. It's, uh, uh, I'm really privileged and honored uh, uh, to be opening this important event here. Uh, the University of Illinois has been synonymous with cutting-edge research for 150 years, and throughout the generations we have been the birthplace of a number of technologies that have changed the world. We are here to celebrate not only the technology developed by Nikolonyak, but the legacy that continues to live on through his students and fellow faculty. That legacy really dates back to 1951, when the father of the transistor, John Bardeen, the only person to win the Nobel Prize in physics twice, joined the Illinois faculty. Bardeen's first PhD student was Nick Kolonyak, uh, who, as we all know, developed the first practical visible spectrum light emitting diode, LED, in 1962, this way changing uh, information display and lighting forever. With colleagues like uh, Professor Isamu Akasaki, Dr. George Crawford, Professor Russell Dupuy, and I should mention that, that Russ is honoring us today, uh, and Professor Shuji Nakamura, Holonyak and these semiconductor pioneers contributed key elements to the green light revolution, which has allowed the world to save large quantities of energy and reduce greenhouse gas emissions and the demand for other forms of energy. For their work, the Quintet earned and received the prestigious Draper Prize in 2015. In 2013, the U.S. Department of Energy published a report projecting that widespread use of LED lighting has the greatest potential impact on energy savings in the United States. Its pioneer, Nick Holonyak, is one of the very few to earn and receive both the National Medal of Science and the National Medal of Technology. Beyond LED, Professor Holonyak and his research group demonstrated the first quantum well laser in 1977, creating a practical laser for fiber optic communications, medical diagnosis, surgery, and many other applications. In 1981, they invented the impurity disordering process that's used in the manufacturing of solid state lasers. In 1990, he and his team discovered the native oxide for vertical cavity surface emitting diode lasers, which are widely used in optical communications. In 2004, he co-invented the transistor laser, the first three, uh, three terminal laser. So we are honored to continue to have Nikolonyak as a faculty emeritus on our campus and in Urbana-Champaign. 
As a fellow electrical and computer engineering professor, it has been a privilege for me to share ideas with and to learn from such a remarkable man. We are thrilled to be marking his 90th birthday today with this celebration of, of Nikolayak's legacy of innovation. And thank you very much for attending this, again, historic event. And, and I wish you all a, a wonderful day. Thank you. It's my uh, privilege to next announce the incoming dean of the uh, uh, College of Engineering, uh, Professor uh, Rashid Bashir. Um, Rashid, of course, also is uh, very accomplished in his own right, uh, a fellow of several societies, including the I IEEE. Um, his research on biomems, lab in a chip, and uh, bio nanotechnology is uh, widely acclaimed and, uh, again, is a leader in his field. So, um, again, Professor Bashir. Good morning. So thank you all for being here. This is uh, just uh, such a wonderful event. And I think just like we are honoring um, Nick today on his ninth birthday, we're also honored by all of the esteemed guests that we have here. So this is just a world-class group, of course, that has changed the world, that have, that have helped Nick change the world. So we're really honored to have you all here. Um, just a few weeks ago, we rededicated Everett Lab, where I know many of you, our, our visitors, have spent a lot of time. And uh, that's now dedicated as a new home of bioengineering with a $55 million project. And Nick, having spent so much time and having so many connections to that building, he actually uh, did a very special favor and he recorded a video for us for, for that event. And um, he told us uh, in that video, and he's always you know, told us that, that uh, you're working hard for the world. And he's always made this point about making an impact to the world. Um, and you're not just working for yourself. So this is, I think, really, really important for all the students and for everybody else here also to, to remember that we are working for the world, not just working for, for ourselves. And everything we do is, is much more than just for us. It's really for everybody else. So it's our job to take that work that we do at Illinois further and further and further. Um, uh, and as Nick always reminds us too, having a great idea is, is fine. That's great. Um, but then working hard to take that idea further uh, that's really, really important also, and really kind of staying on it and keeping at it. Um, and you really haven't finished until you have shared that idea in a real and a very tangible way, unless you have made the world a better place. And I think that also ties very well with the discussion we're having last night, too, about this basic research versus translational research. I mean, I think Nick's work and the work of all of the guests here is so um, uh, relevant to exactly that discussion that this is, not a, this is not a debate, it's not a conflict. You can do both. You can do really, really good, basic, you know, curiosity-driven work that is then also can have a tremendous impact in the world and change the world in very practical ways. Uh, so to be honest, Nick reminds us of that every time we see him or we hear from him. Um, he has very high expectations of his alma mater, which is, which is wonderful, and, um, and the place, you know, the place he spent all of his career. Uh, and who better to set that standard for us than the inventor of the visible LED, the $500 billion industry it spawned? Uh, who better to keep us on our toes uh, than the person who drove the creation of the quantum well laser, as was mentioned earlier? And uh, who better to have that expression of passion for real world impact um, than the winner of the 2015 Draper, Draper Prize? And again, knowing Nick, um, and who better to, as you know, he would also say, occasionally kick us in the rear to really keep moving forward, right? Really keep moving forward. Um, so quickly, just so many of uh, uh, Nick's former colleagues and students are here, I want to assure you that we will continue to push forward on that and do our best to uh, continue to live up to that expectation. Um, just a couple of things, we have, uh, just the College of Engineering uh, has recently hired 39 faculty this past year, so I had nothing to do with it, it was Tamir and everybody else, but I can certainly report on that. So 39 new faculty are going to be joining us this year uh, from the last recruiting cycle. This is some of the best talent um, in the world that is coming to Illinois. Uh, two of our professors attended the quantum computing uh, workshop at the White House, uh, the summit at the, at the White House. 
Uh, our faculty are building drones to deliver medicine, care to the elderly, improving the resolution of uh, space-based telescopes, and developing new CRISPR techniques. So there's a lot of very exciting stuff going on, and we need to continue to really push hard to stay at the cutting, but not the cutting, but the bleeding edge, uh, and really keep moving things forward in terms of research. So Nick's drive and I for meaningful impact have the world's best home at Illinois, and they always will. Um, and I am personally committed to also making sure that we really keep pushing that forward as I move into, as I'm humbled to move into this new dean's uh, position in office next week. Um, uh, so again, thank you all for coming. Uh, and I just want to, you know, when I started, I was also the director of MNTL uh, when I joined Illinois. And the first person I went and visited was Nekoloniak. He was still, you know, in the lab there on the second floor. And I'm also trying to make sure that next week, as I, after I start, he's one of the first people I go meet, actually. So we are working on that. Um, so again, thank you all for being here. I know what an instrument role, uh, instrumental role all of you have played um, in, uh, um, in his life and his work over the years. And we really uh, appreciate the role you play uh, to continue to be really great ambassadors for, for Illinois. Really, I personally look forward to working with all of you uh, to really take our college to new heights. So thank you, and welcome. <laughs> I'd like next to like <coughs> like to next introduce the uh, uh, acting head of the department, uh, Professor uh, Wen Mei Wu. Uh, Professor Wu is the uh, Walter Jerry uh, Sanders the Third Advanced Micro Devices Endowed Chair in Electrical Engineering Professor. Um, is uh, again widely uh, recognized for uh, uh, for his contributions um, in the field of, of computing and computer architecture. And of course, leading things like the Blue Waters Project or being the co-director of that. Um, it's our privilege to, to uh, have him, and uh, um, he'll say a few words now. Thanks. Thank you all. Hello. Good morning. So, um, it is, uh, I'm Wen Mei Hu, the acting director, head, uh, uh, department head of ECE here. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this um, spectacular auditorium that is made possible by the donation from Granger Family Foundation. And also I'd like to uh, thank each and every one of you to, uh, for coming to this uh, great event and for those uh, you know, uh, our uh, great alums who responded so enthusiastically when Milton invited you to come back and, uh, you know, and talk about uh, their uh, ment advisor, mentor, and friend, Professor Holoniak. Um, this is the picture of Professor Holoniak when he was in high school. And um, uh, this is it's really a story of a son of Illinois. And he was born into a very humble uh, circumstance uh, during the Great Economic Depression of this country. And his father provided for the family by digging coal out of uh, you know, uh, dark uh, underground. And this young man, even though he was so surrounded by uh, material poverty, um, but was very wealthy in terms of intelligence, in terms of imagination, and in terms of determination. And um, uh, he was you know, very curious, and he was, his curiosity was really piqued by the spark, uh, spark, uh, spark wires and plugs of the Ford Model T engine of his uncles. And um, uh, the curiosity coupled with the grit and determination supported you know, by his you know, confidence that he can change the world, even though he was starting with pretty much nothing. And this is the great American story. And this is also a great story that um, you know, a little boy, while crafting his own toys with his pocket knives, eventually will be you know, developing unique ways of growing crystals and um, uh, being able to, you know, to have, uh, you know, uh, unique ways of uh, oxidation and layering and eventually created the devices that changed our world. This young man knew the, uh, the first hand that the danger and dismal condition underground for digging coal out of uh, the ground to be able to light our world. And today, um, you know, his visible light emitting diode is vastly more efficient than any of the uh, conventional way of lighting. And possibly no one else alive today uh, will have a greater impact on reducing 
the world's energy consumption and thus conserving our natural resources. Uh, I have a personal piece of data. Uh, I changed all the light bulbs in my house uh, you know, two years ago to LED. And when I look at the, uh, the electrical bill, I, I can fully confirm that <laughs> it was a huge factor for me. And um, uh, I mean, this is the uh, picture that uh, when uh, Nick was a, uh, uh, I would say, a relatively young faculty in our department. And um, uh, so he was captured, uh, uh, capitalizing on the opportunities of this public university. And Colonia learned uh, from his mentor, Professor John Bardeen, and uh, about the complex, unexpected, and poorly understood properties of the small particles in the matter. And it was a subject worthy of his curiosity and brilliance. Over his 50 years of faculty member, his contribution had been immense, lasting, and practical. Some of us may have you know, our career summarized by one of these words, but you know, his career to date can truly be summarized by these three words and much, much more. And each, each of, uh, we each living, uh, you know, use the technology with roots in Professor Holiniak's lab. Our technical talks this morning will draw from the field of electrical engineering, material science, physics, and chemistry to present uh, the innovations over the last half century of illumination and amplification. And each speaker is a renowned expert in this field. And collectively, they have revolutionized the creation and transmission of light over very short distances as well as tremendously long distances. On a personal note, um, when I joined Illinois in 1987, I, I was pretty much just working with my own students and um, you know, interacting with some of the faculties who are close to me. And I did not meet uh, Professor Holoniak until 19... Uh, 1993, five years, more than five years after I joined the department. So for those young junior faculty who joined our department, don't wait for five years before you get to know the more senior members. And in 1993, the way that Nick and I met, met was we both traveled to New Jersey. We both traveled to Princeton, New Jersey. And um, uh, Nick was uh, receiving the Eta Kappa Nu Sen uh, Outstanding Senior Award, and I, uh, I was lucky enough to receive the Eta Kappa Nu Outstanding Young Electrical Engineer Award. When I was sitting there in the banquet, I was listening to Nick's uh, comment, and I realized that how great Illinois is. Just you know, the kind of uh, research achievements that uh, you know, uh, even a faculty could not fully understand until we both go to Princeton and listen to him in the banquet. And also, um, Nick was amazingly gracious and kind to me uh, during that banquet. And for the years after, when whenever we see each other, I'm still being uh, blessed by the gracefulness and the kindness that Nick has uh, for me. And I, I truly learned how to be a colleague, how to be a, a faculty member, and even how to be a gentleman from Nick. So um, this impressive building is actually anchored by uh, Nicole Beck's stunning amplifier uh, piece on his uh, uh, east side. And we're showing the picture here. And these two waves represent those two uh, uh, giants. And um, uh, they allow us to, you know, to reflect on both illumination and amplification. And these two waves also represent two giants, um, Bardeen and Holoniak and their par partnership interaction. Bardeen's invention of the transistor, uh, you know, capitalized on the conduct, uh, conduction over electrically charged particles uh, to amplify signals. And Holoniak's invention of the visible LED furthered our understanding of the semiconductor and added the light dimension to uh, our, uh, you know, our uh, in, uh, electronics. So we, Eventually, these inventions uh, you know, replaced long distance phone lines with uh, op uh, fiber optics and triggered the important information revolution that we are experiencing today. 
for those of you who enjoy watching YouTube or Netflix, think about you know, the world if we're still connecting with electrical telegraph wires. And um, um, so we also uh, you know, uh, want to uh, see that uh, the, the world has been you know, uh, quickly evolving from the uh, electrical circuits and the Bardeen and Brayton's uh, transistors to Holoniac and Fan's transistor laser. And we expect many, many more uh, great breakthroughs to come. So we celebrate a uh, scientific revolution of illumination and application, but in a sense, we also celebrate an even more fundamental form of illumination and amplification. As a public university, um, this public university was the place that allowed the singular brilliance of John Bardeen to illuminate other bright minds, particularly Nick Holoniak Jr., and amplify their scientific impact over the whole world. Our speakers today are the heirs and also those who are lucky enough to be illuminated by uh, the, these giants. And um, uh, today, uh, as we reflect on department's history, innovation, and technology, we should also consider the fact that today, we have no less uncertainty and no less need for innovation in our world. The Moore's law is coming to an end, and we still don't know how to scale our transistors and our devices beyond what we can do in the next few years. And this kind of uncertainty requires the innovation, it requires the curiosity, it requires the imagination of the young researchers who are in this room and in our department today. <clears throat> Although Professor Holonia could not join us today, we, would, uh, we need not wonder what he would say. We do have his remarks when he accepted the, uh, the Lemonson MIT Prize in 2003. When he accepted the prize, he thanked his uh, beloved wife, Kay. He said, I cannot think of living without her, so he has helped, uh, she has helped me the most. My parents would be terribly honored to know that something like this is occurring to their son, who started in a place where getting a living was a difficult thing. John Bardeen, if he were alive today, would have a big smile. He would be very pleased with what we are doing today in the transistor world. Today, we all have a big smile at, um, when we gather to consider the achievement and legacy of our colleague and friend, Nick Holoniak. I leave you with a bit of Nick's wisdom from Laura Schmidt's wonderful book, The Bright Stuff. She quoted him, there's only one great adventure, and that's, that is to learn more. So let us embark on today's great adventure and set out to learn more. Thank you. A little over 20 years ago, um, uh, the building that we were all in was the Electrical Engineering Research Lab, which is now where the uh, Bardeen Quad was, or Quad is. Um, the, the building was, was being torn down, um, you know, while Nick maintained his, his lab there. Um, but uh, one of his legacies uh, was the micro and nanotechnology lab. It was the work that Nick did and other people in that building that led to uh, the micro and nanotechnology building being able to be built. Um, the current director of the uh, Micro and nanotechnology is uh, Professor Brian Cunningham. He's going to say a few words next. Uh, Brian is part of the uh, uh, Holignac family in that he was uh, one of Professor Greg Stillman's students. And of course, Greg uh, was another great professor here, a student of, of Nick um, who passed away. Um, uh, Brian has uh, numerous awards, uh, a fellow of multiple societies. Uh, widely recognized uh, for his work in the bio, uh, bio nanotechnology area, especially with things like lab and a smartphone, uh, making uh, advances in, in uh, diagnostic applications. Um, 
uh, and also as a, a member of the National Academy of Inventors. Um, so it's my privilege to uh, have Brian say a few words. Uh, thank you, John, and uh, you know, thank you, thanks so much to uh, Catherine Summers and the, the whole team uh, in the ECE department, Advancement and Communications, for uh, pulling uh, everything together to make today possible, and, uh, and, and Bill Sanders and Wen Mei, who, um, for as uh, former and current department heads, uh, just being so enthusiastic about um, you know, organizing a celebration for uh, Nick's 90th birthday. I, I think it, it's a milestone that uh, I'm really pleased that we're you know, recognizing and, and that some, uh, some of, of Nick's uh, alums will, are coming back to share some of their experience and to recognize you know, the impact uh, of, uh, of Nick's work uh, and, and both in, in the research and then you know, the products and all the applications that, that followed that research. Uh, and so as um, uh, John mentioned, Professor Dallasassi mentioned, um, I, I was a, a student uh, in uh, Greg Stillman's group, and uh, we were, uh, in Stillman's group, we were welcomed as guests uh, in uh, Nick Holoniak's uh, lab, and, and so um, I, I had the opportunity to uh, share in um, Nick's uh, daily coffee hours, uh, where you know, he, he would you know, discuss and, and, and share with the students, and also to be a, a student in uh, you know, Nick's uh, course that, that he ta uh, taught in advanced uh, compound semiconductors at the graduate level. And so, uh, especially for the students that are, are here today, um, I wanted to share that experience for you a, a little bit, uh, because I, I know that for, for myself and, and the, the, uh, our visitors that are here today, um, I, I think that we knew at the time that we were experiencing it that we were participating in something special. Uh, sometimes you hear people talk about how um, I didn't know it was so great or so important until afterwards, but I, I've, I've came to the University of Illinois uh, as an undergraduate and stayed for graduate school uh, because of how great this place is uh, in semiconductors. And, and Nick uh, Holoniak and Greg Stillman were, were the reason that uh, I you know, you know, st studied here for graduate school. I think it was the same uh, for uh, many of my colleagues. And so I, I recall uh, you know, Dennis Steffi and Fred Kish, we were uh, students together. We, we had uh, more hair and less gray hair at, at that time. Uh, but I, I think that, that some of my, I'll, I'll share some of my experience uh, that I think will resonate with you, uh, but also for the students that are here to kind of let you know what it was like. I, I wish you knew what it was like to have uh, someone like Nick uh, participating and advising you. And so, um, so, so taking uh, Nick's course in, a uh, graduate level course in, in semiconductors, it was intimidating experience. Uh, I, I would have to say, that um, you know, your Nick would um, you know, get up there on the chalkboard without any notes and go into uh, equations and you know, the math of semiconductors and you know, lay out uh, everything about um, you know, Brillouin zones, uh, Fermi levels, uh, phonons, and you know, reveal all the, the mysteries of semiconductors and, and how these you know, properties that we could observe with you know, your diodes and transistors really came from things that you know, occurred at the atomic scale. And, and so uh, taking the course what was partly intimidating because Nick was, was Nick and that he taught at a very advanced level. We hung on his every word and tried to understand every equation and it was difficult. Um, I, I recall you know, that the homework problems were, I don't know how Nick came up with them, but they didn't have any real answer. I mean, if you would get to, I mean, it, it's very satisfying to do a homework problem where you, you know, get the answer at the end and you draw a box around it and say that's it. But, but Nick's homework questions were never like that. It was always a, like an exploration, an adventure, trying to figure out what to do. A and he just wanted to see how you would think about a problem, maybe even one that he was thinking about that week. A and so um, you, you couldn't ever look at old homework sets or anything like that. A and, and the TAs themselves, they didn't have much better clue either. They, they, they would just kind of set us on these goose chases to look up, up papers. I mean, it, it, was, it was very challenging. And so it, it was such a relief, actually, that would, if Nick would stop writing equations and would uh, go up in front of the class and kind of lean up against the desk and start telling us stories uh, about the, you know, the giants of, of compound semiconductors and, and semiconductors that were some of his contemporaries. And he, he did this in class. Um, he also did it during those uh, coffee sessions every day where he would sit and we would gather around him and we would listen to the stories that he would share. And 
Um, the, the, the stories were really about how the, 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 the people that were you know, the names in books, you know, the, the icons, the, the giants, the, the people who had their names on the equations, so, so Bardeen and Hall and, and Fermi and, and Isaki and so on, how, how to Nick, the, these were real people. They were colleagues of his that they would um, you try to understand what was going on uh, in, in these little pieces of rock where you could get light to come out uh, because of things that were happening at, at the quantum scale that you could never see in, in person. And, and so um, they, you know, he would describe how these people um, would feel around, uh, would, would have ideas that didn't work out, um, how they, they would argue with each other, sometimes in, in really uh, uh, heated you know, arguments, um, how they would construct experiments uh, to try to reveal something that they could understand things that are happening at, at the quantum level. And so really got, got the sense that, that these weren't just uh, you know, you know, giants or statues or something, but they were you know, human beings who, who were you know, seeking to understand you know, new science and, and make an impact on, on the world. Uh, but really, and they would you know, dig in you know, deep in, into the physics. They would look at experimental uh, data that they took and look for anomalies and try to understand why uh, you know, something like an IV curve looked the way it did and like a little squiggle in it could, could mean something big. And by really exploring uh, those things at a detailed level, um, that's how they made progress, you know, bit by bit. And, and so um, I, I really learned um, some, some deep lessons. I, I, I see in, in, in my work and the work of many of my colleagues, I think I took those lessons you know, to heart uh, because we, we could see that um, like scientists were really like explorers, that we were trying to understand new things uh, by using our you know, ingenuity uh, to, to make like, progress bit by bit. It was always like, like a, a battle. Uh, you know, to try to make each bit of progress. But you could see uh, over the course of, of year after year how, how Nick would take um, some um, little trick of materials, like uh, getting uh, super lattices to diffuse into each other or growing an oxide uh, on, uh, on aluminum arsenide, to turn those things uh, into whole technology that would enable you to do things uh, with, with semiconductors you couldn't do before, how to get more light out of an LED, how to move it into a, a you know, visible wavelength range. And when, when, when I think back to those days, it was like in the um, late 1980s, we talked about actually how these things were going to become lighting, that you were going to put them in rooms and light them. But it was pretty hard to imagine that at the time, because these devices only made a little bit of light, they didn't last very long, maybe you had to cool them down to liquid nitrogen. To, so Nick was talking about those things at that time, and you know, we, I think as a student, I sort of thought, oh, I hope that happens, that would be great, but didn't totally believe that yet. Uh, but, but he really did believe and kept pushing it and pushing, and now you can see all the things that, that are possible. And, and so I, I really tried to bring that to my own work, um, and you know, after I graduated and, and left the university and went into industry, um, I moved into a different area you know, working on biosensors. And I tried to bring you know, Nick's um, you know, way of approaching LEDs to the way that I would approach biosensors, to try to you know, treat them as a science, to try to dig in, to try to not chase every um, new fad that came along, but really focus on, on my thing. Uh, and become the expert and, and just look for those anomalies, look for those little tricks and materials and, and arrangements of matter you could do to get some advancement in, in performance. And that's been the, the, the way that I've tried to, to push things forward in my, in my own career. Um, and I can only dream of having the impact that, that Nick has had, but, uh, but I know that, that, that many people, including some of our guests, really have. So uh, when, when I, I came back uh, to join the faculty here in 2004, um, I, I was you know, kind of concerned, actually, about what Nick would think about what I had done with my career, because I had like, I lost the religion of compound semiconductors. I'd, I had kind of turned into these like, biosensor things that didn't have any you know, gallium arsenide or indium phosphide in them. And, and so I was kind of worried about what he would think of me and, and my, my work. And so this, this, uh, in th that first year that I was back, there was some occasion, I can't really remember what it was exactly, but uh, I gave a short presentation about my research, and, and Nick was sitting with Milton in either the first or second row. And, and I, I was kind of worried, and like, like nervous about giving the, the talk, but, but he listened, and then afterwards he actually spoke with me and, and very graciously said, oh, now I see what are you doing, that, that's great. And I, I felt like, I was like, okay, and I, like Nick, well, I, you know, doesn't you know, th think that I, um, 
you know, you know, turned my back on science or something, but, but saw some value in things I was working on. That was actually very uh, encouraging for me. So um, really looking forward to the, the, the talks uh, today. Um, I, I, I hope that, um, you, uh, that, that Nick has had this kind of impact on so many people, my, my, myself, uh, Professor Dallas Sassi, uh, Milton Fang, uh, and, and so many others that he was colleagues with. And I hope that the students that we have now, um, still, you're, you're, even though you may not know it, you're kind of experiencing a lot of legacy from, from Nick in terms of the way he approaches science, the way he mentors people, and, and his you know, graciousness. So, so thanks so much. I'm really looking forward to the talks today.